What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. We have a new guest on the channel, Corey. New on my channel, but obviously most of you guys have probably seen him on the Twitter timelines, things like that. Obviously, Miles and I have had him on a lot of podcasts and things. So we'll skip the intro. Corey, what's going on, man? Not much, man. Excited to be on here today. Excited to head to ASD, the big trade show happening in Vegas. I'm headed there in about six hours. So looking forward to getting there, making some good relationships and and also meeting a lot of people in the community too. That's it. So yeah, we are recording this August, what's today, Thursday. The ASD show is this weekend. So really the, the topic of discussion today is, is just to kind of give an overview for the viewers of first and foremost, what ASD is, but more importantly, the preparation, those who haven't really done much digging into some of the specific brands and things like that for the next two days, and ultimately what to expect. It's going to be um, probably a big eye-opening experience for a lot of people going. Um, so we'll just start at the top. What specifically is ASD at the macro level? Yeah, so ASD, it stands for Affordable Shopping Destination. And what it really is, is it's just one of the largest, call it like a retail wholesale trade show. It's in Las Vegas, Nevada. It happens twice a year. It happens in March and it happens in August. And really, there's, I believe, over a thousand, maybe even closer to 2,000 vendors will buy booths to come to this trade show set up their products and a bunch of buyers, hundreds if not thousands of buyers like us are walking around to each booth, seeing the products that they carry and looking to strike relationships with some of these suppliers looking to do business right there on the floor. So it's a great way to meet suppliers, to source products. I mean, if you're doing it right, you should be buying products there at the show. And also just to collaborate with other people in the industry. So not only are there vendors, but there are service providers and a lot of other folks in the e-commerce community, other retail businesses, just a melting pot of people in this space. And so the interesting, and so I've been to ASD, I think twice in Vegas, and I actually went once in Orlando when they had it down there. Nice. Um, and I think one of the interesting points about ASD is it's not specifically geared towards full-on wholesale sellers that have been in the space a while. Right? I think it's also a good opportunity for maybe OA sellers who are taking it pretty serious as a entry point to wholesale, right? Agreed. Because it's a, you, you kind of mentioned it, it's a really fluent uh, kind of connecting point of people who are looking to sell products and obviously Amazon sellers who are looking to buy products. So I think that's potentially a good entry point. And if you're listening to this and you're an OA seller and you're like, ah, I'm not there yet, I haven't started wholesale, maybe it's a next year endeavor, this might be a good opportunity to get into that. I completely agree because yeah, if you're an OA seller, Chances are you've are I mean you're already doing business right you already have products that you carry brands that you carry this could be a really good opportunity depending on the categories that you're already selling in to strike relationships with larger suppliers of those products so no longer having to buy them from retail stores now buying them either straight from the brand themselves if you're able to meet some of those brands there or from authorized distributors or wholesalers where you're most likely going to get a much better price than you're getting from just the retail websites that you're currently buying from. And also to add to that, if you are on the OA side and you're looking to transition into wholesale, this can be a really good opportunity to meet other wholesale sellers that are right. already experienced in the Amazon space, because I can attest to this firsthand. So when I went to ASD back in March, there were other wholesale sellers that I met for the first time that week, and they actually pulled me in on certain deals with them. So for example, there was uh, a large beauty supplier that they were trying to put together an order on and really to get pricing that was going to make sense, they needed to spend about $100,000. So the guy that initiated the relationship pulled in two other guys and then reached out to me and we were able to put together a pretty large order. Unfortunately, it didn't go through, but that's the type of synergies and those are the types of relationships that can be made with other sellers at the show as well. And then obviously those can those will extend after the show. So those are people that you stay in touch with, that you do business with long into the future, not just the week that you're there. Right. Um, super good point. So we'll get this video posted, hopefully before a lot of you guys are actually on the way to Vegas. So you can listen uh, prior to those long flights and hopefully use that time to do some prep. Speaking of preparation, what should people be looking at, thinking about considering on the way to Vegas in preparation for the show to make the most of the experience? Yeah, that's a great question. So my philosophy and I Hey, quick commercial break. I appreciate you guys supporting and following the channel. If you are enjoying this particular video, which I'm assuming you are if you're still watching it to this point, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Scroll down, hit that subscribe button. Helps me out, helps the channel out. Let's get back to the content. I will continue to preach this is that I want whoever's going to ASD, I want you to choose a niche. All right. And so it can't just be any niche because ASD lends itself to certain types of suppliers. So at least when I went in March, there was three exhibit halls and each hall was dedicated to a specific 
uh, like range of categories, if you will. So there was one hall that was strictly beauty and cosmetics. There was one hall that was general merchandise. So think tools, health and household toys, like any, really just any, anything. Right. And then the third hall, I, from what I believe, from what I understand, cause I actually didn't visit this hall. The third hall was geared towards more like smoke shop type suppliers. Right. Yeah. So, which there are a lot of brands in those categories that can do, that do really well on Amazon. So my first advice would be to choose a niche within one of those three main categories. So for example, for us this time around, we're, we're going to get into beauty, but we're actually going down a little further. We're looking at perfume specifically. And so the reason we're looking at perfumes is because we are hazmat eligible. They, uh, most people aren't hazmat eligible. So it's that barrier to entry. There's a lot of good perfume suppliers there and higher average sale prices, sometimes higher margins. So the first step would be to choose a niche. The second step would be once you have the niche that you're going to focus on while you're there, you want to put together a short list of not only brands that you're interested in, interested in, but also products from those brands. So we're pulling out, let's say 15 to 20 or so perfume brands. And then within those 15 or 20 brands, we're going to pull out three to five products from each brand that we want to get quotes on when we're there. And we're going to take it a step further and actually even put in our list, our desired price point. So that way, when we're at ASD and I, let's say I find a vendor that he carries perfumes and he carries a lot of the brands that I have on my short list. Not only does he carry the brands, he even has a couple of the products that I'm looking for. Well, all I need to do is look at my list and see, all right, what price do I have on my list that I'm comfortable paying? And as long as he is at or below that price, then I can strike a deal with him right there on the floor, place an order. And then if they have it in stock, it could get shipped to my 3PL the next day, right? Before we even leave the show. So that is really going to be the most efficient approach in my experience. And then after the fact, this kind of goes without saying, but you want to follow up. You want to extend those relationships out past the show and really just make sure that you're keeping in front of those people. And so how can people access this information for beforehand? Yeah, so ASD and really not just ASD, but pretty much every trade show mm -hmm. out there is going to have a website and they're going to have an exhibitor list on their website. So ASD, for example, has an entire portal where you can go in and see every single company that is signed up and paid to be an exhibitor at the show, which, like I said, is over a thousand companies. And ASD's portal is really robust. You can actually filter by category. You can filter by location. So you want to go in in advance and do a little bit of legwork and try to pull out maybe uh, a really targeted list of suppliers that you want to make sure that you talk to while you're there. But at the same time, I always recommend people don't get, don't be married to that list because mm -hmm. like this happened to us, right? You get there, you have your short list. You're like, oh, I'm definitely going to talk to these people. But then you look around and there's just like, oh, that supplier looks good. That supplier looks good. And there's like hundreds of people that look like they might be worth talking to. And so the list is more of a guide and you want to let it flow naturally and, and really just go booth to booth. I mean, that's how we did it and it worked really well. So before we get to the stand, let's talk about really trying to qualify the booths, right? There's mm -hmm. going to be closeouts. There's going to be obviously cash and carry, which we're probably really not interested in. It's going to be brands, it's going to be distribution companies and really every company in between. And so yep. from before we even engage in that conversation to really make the use of our, make the most use of our time, be more efficient, be most efficient. How can we start to qualify these stands before we even go up to the talk to them to see if it's something we're potentially interested in? Yeah. And so are you talking about like when we're at the show, if I see a booth from across Not on the your room? List. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a good question. So really like most vendors are going to have the types of products they carry displayed, displayed at their booth, right? So there's plenty of vendors where you can take one look at their booth and know that they're not a good fit because you'll see that the products they have on display are generic or they're not branded or they're just, they're kind mm -hmm. of just, I mean, pretty obviously products that they just imported from China threw onto their booth and hope that people are buying. Or like gas station products, things like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Just like really cheap kind of novelty stuff. And obviously as Amazon wholesale sellers, we're looking to buy brand name products that are already selling well on Amazon that have that built in demand. And it's pretty easy, like I said, to spot products that don't fit that mold. So uh, yeah, that'd be that'd be my approach is just see what they have on their table. And if it's a brand, if it if it has a brand name on it, even if you don't recognize the brand, it could be an opportunity, right? It could be a niche brand that's already selling well, and it might be worth the conversation. Yeah, I mean, the other thing that you're probably going to want to do before you even engage in a conversation specifically around brands is just to pull up a few of their products on Amazon to see if they're specifically on the listing, right? right. Because and we're talking people... we're talking brand direct, right? So you're right, talking if, course, yep. if we see a booth of where it's clearly the brand themselves as opposed to a reseller or a distributor. Right. That's a great point. 
because and that'll give you a leg up in the conversation, right? Because you can go into that conversation really knowing what to expect, right? If they're a brand and they're not selling on Amazon themselves and they have seven, eight, nine people on their listings, well, you know that they're clearly not doing it and they're working with people like you. So the right. second they'd be like, ah, yeah, we're not, we're, we don't work with Amazon sellers. Well, you say, okay, well, I, 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 I understand the hesitancy. There's a lot of Amazon sellers. I know that I probably wouldn't want to work with myself, so I don't blame you. However, I have done some research in your brand and your listings. I see eight or nine sellers that you're already working with. I also see four of those have been going out of stock. Three of those are underpriced. Two of those aren't targeting the right search criteria. So can we can we now have this conversation again? Exactly. Right? Exactly. Because really, that's I think that's going to be the... It doesn't take long, especially for people like me and you that are experienced. I mean, we've we've looked at tens of thousands of listings, tens of thousands of keep, keep a graph. So if I see a booth from across the room where I know, all right, that is definitely a brand, right? That's not a distributor. It's not a wholesaler. The first thing I'm going to do before I walk up to their booth is I'm going to pull up my, probably my seller amp app. And I'm just going to do a quick search for the brand name, right? I'm going to look at for a couple of their listings. I'm going to look for, all right, are they selling to Amazon? Do they have a direct relationship with Amazon right. retail? If not, do they sell on the listings themselves? Like you said, because if they do, that's probably not going to be a good fit because most brands that sell on the listings themselves, a lot of the time they have their stuff together. They know what they're doing, but a lot of the time they don't. And if you see really terrible listings, but they're that's the only seller on the listing. Starter. Yeah, that's a conversation starter. And then really, like you mentioned, really best case scenario, in my opinion, is if we look up their listings, they're really poor quality. Maybe they only have a couple of photos. The titles are terrible. They're not using bullet points. They don't have any A plus content. A lot of these deficiencies that we see and couple that with the fact that they've got five, seven, 10, 25 sellers on their listings. You know, for a fact that if you walk up to that brand and even mention the word Amazon, they're going to cringe. But if you can mention all those things that we said mm -hmm. as deficiencies and like, hey, what are you guys doing to fix this? I guarantee you they're going to say, well, we don't know how to fix it or we just try not to think about it, right? Like most brands just try to avoid it completely. And so that when you can have that conversation and open that way and then position yourself as the expert, then you'll see like, I mean, this happened at ASD in March. Mm -hmm. They were very hesitant. You position yourself as the expert. You speak to the problems that they're having, the pain points that they're having. And it's like the conversation does a complete 180. They go from not wanting to talk to you to being like, oh, I've got to, you know, we've got to have a meeting or I got to introduce you to my sales manager or whatever. It completely changes the conversation. Yeah. I mean, it's all about positioning, right? In wholesale, the better you are positioning yourself, your brand, your company, the more accounts you open. The worse yep. you are positioning, the less accounts. You improve your positioning, you improve your conversion, right? That's kind of the mathematics behind it. And the other thing is that I think a lot of people overestimate is, I mean, not to get too creepy, but you know exactly all these sales reps are going to be staying in Vegas for the next two or three days. Yep. Right. And so if you think about the amount of conversations that are going on with the sales reps and, and Amazon sellers in the trade show, if you can be like, hey, where are you staying tonight? Do you want to go out for a drink or go to, you know, hit the roulette table, something like that? You mm -hmm. know them well, they are all staying in Vegas for the next two or three days. Exactly. And they, they eat that stuff up. I mean, you talk to the reps there and they might not be super gung ho about being at the trade show, but they're like, oh, well, you know, I love coming to Vegas because we can let loose, we can gamble, we can do this, mm -hmm. we can do that, whatever. They just like being there in the environment. And this is some advice that I've given over the last few months to people that are thinking about attending trade shows. And it's a super simple tip, but I think it goes a long way. So I, I always tell people before you go to the trade show, really like one and a half to two weeks in advance, I want you to schedule reservations at decent restaurants, right? They don't have to be crazy fancy, but like nice restaurants for each night that you're there for let's say three, four or five people. And you can always cancel them, right? But the idea is that if you hit it off with a sales rep or a brand or a brand yeah, owner during the day, then you already have those reservations set and you can say, hey, I'm having dinner tonight at, you know, at this restaurant at this time, I have a couple more spots, would love for you to join us, right? And I mean, they're not going to say no, especially if you already have it booked. I mean, it's a simple answer for them. Like you're probably going to pay for it, right? So it's a free dinner for them. And that gets them off of the floor, away from the noise and puts you guys in a really close, intimate environment to talk business, to talk the pain points that they're having. And like you said, just to continue to position yourself as the expert to fill whatever need that they have, whether that's more sales, better Amazon presence, anything like that. Yeah. And they're, they're surely going to remember that conversation that happened in the casino or in the restaurant more 100%. so. And it's just going to be blending in, right? Any way 
you can differentiate that conversation, the better. Even if it says mm-hmm. something simple as you guys both are Yankees fans or New York Giants fans or like something super simple to stand out, to make your conversation memorable. Because then when you email them in a week, like, hey, the only Giants fan I met, right? And automatically right. it's going to ring a bell. It's going to differentiate that conversation. And he's going to be like, oh, I remember that guy. He was pretty cool, right? Yes. all re- It's all about rapport building. It's all about relationship building. It's all about positioning. I mean, anybody that's listening to this that's been in a B2B sales role will think, oh, this is what I do every day, right? Like this is this is like sales 101 for people that have been there before, but it's worth talking about, right? Because a lot of, in fact, most people aren't in sales roles. They don't have that experience and this is going to be helpful for them. And so one more tip I do want to add. So I know a lot of people, especially if it's their first trade show, right? This can be really overwhelming. You walk into this hall and there's literally thousands of people walking around, thousands of products sitting out. They don't know where to start. They're afraid to approach vendors. They think, well, what do I do? Like, how do I, how do I open these conversations? And my advice, and this is my strategy. This is what I do every time. And it works like a charm is if I'm, so if I see a vendor that I want to talk to, right? I don't go right up to the sales rep and start talking or the owner and start talking. What I do is I walk up to their booth and remember how I said, every booth has just products. Like they the have products. products. Yeah. I just, I'm just like, I'm looking at products. I'm picking up products. I'm, I'm like, you know, kind of holding them in my hands. I'm, I may be looking at the price tag. I may be even making comments to myself. Like, Oh, you know, we've sold this before. Even I'm not talking to anybody. I'm just talking to myself. And then if you're walking up to their booth and you start to show interest in the products, they're going to be on you. They're going to say, Hey, you know, what can I do for you? What are you, what are you here for? What are you looking for? And then, and then they're the one initiating. And then it's just so easy to go into the conversation from there. So just show interest in the products and they'll come to you. Yeah. And so that's a a good segue into the last point I want to talk about is, as actually being at the booth, actually, you know, running that conversation, first and foremost, things to bring, right? Obviously business cards. We Mm -hmm. wear like a, a branded polo with, you know, shorts or jeans or whatever. Um, Anything else that you can think of like to actually bring? So as far as things to bring, I mean, really, I always have a backpack on because I've got my laptop in it yeah. just in case I need to step out for a second, look up a product or even put an order together right there in like a spreadsheet, right? So have that computer on me. Uh, the other thing too is just the Seller Amp mobile app is critical. There's, I mean, there's other scanning tools out there, but that mobile app is really robust. And I mean, I've made decisions right there on the fly just from looking at that app. So I mean, seller at mobile app, business cards, computer, so you can step out and place orders if you need to. And other than that, that's pretty much it. Another, I guess, tip that I would give people too is so every time I have a conversation with somebody, what I do is I immediately step away and w- whenever that conversation is done and I make a quick voice memo to myself, yep. either in my notes or just anywhere where I can access it later and just say, hey, I just spoke with Joe at XYZ Distributor. We talked about this. He's a Yankees fan. Uh, we talked about these brands, follow up with him in three days or whatever, right? So that way, when I get home a couple of days later, I just can go through each voice memo and that's going to dictate my action items for that week. And um, that's always been a, an effective strategy for us. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a good point. And then finally, in the conversation, right? Obviously, we, we want to be as meaningful, as efficient, as valuable as possible. What are some like qualifying questions we could be talking with brands and distributors to really streamline that process to not be not be wasting time with anyone that that has simply no potential? Yeah. So when it comes to distributors, I pretty much like to lead with, well, hey, I see a couple of the products, a couple of the brands that you have here laying around. If those are brands that are already on my list and I'm going to go straight into those. So if let's say on my list, I have Polo Ralph Lauren perfume and I see a bottle of Polo Ralph Lauren perfume sitting on their desk, I'm going to say, hey. That's a brand. We've sold it before. We're interested in it. Do you have this specific product, right? I'll go like right into getting down to business because I know that they're qualified based on the brands that they carry. If I don't see any brands that they carry that are on my list, and I'll just ask them, right? I'll say, hey, I've got a list of of brands we're looking to source while we're here. Do you happen to carry any of these? If no, but they carry maybe other brands in that category, then we might look to say, okay, well, let me get an application. Let's get set up in your system and either like send me what you have on hand or Maybe we can reach out after the show with another list of brands that they do have to get quotes at that point, right? And then if it's the brand themselves, I don't like to go straight into the Amazon pitch. In fact, I, I highly recommend against that. If anything, right. like I said, I've, I'm feeling out the products. They'll come up to me and I say, hey, like what you guys have going on here. And then I just ask them, right? I say like, how are sales going? How's, how's the show been? Have you sold a lot of product? What are your pain points, Right. And just getting to know them, getting a feel for their brand. And then eventually after I've kind of warmed them up a bit, I might say, 
So like, and, and I'm, I like to be very upfront about it. Like, okay, like obviously you guys are on Amazon, right? And I'm going to take a wild guess and guess that you probably don't want any more Amazon sellers. And I don't blame you. I wouldn't either. But here's a couple of things that I notice as a veteran Amazon seller that I think mm -hmm. might be useful for you and take that information, have it if you want. Uh, and then, yeah. And the, but other, if you, you know, if you want to talk further, I'm here and I can maybe guide you in fixing some of these issues. Right. So really doing it in like a non-threatening way, looking just to educate them more than anything. And if they're interested and they see the value, then they will be the ones to say like, Oh, well, you know, why is that? Why are our listings terrible? Why are competitors advertising on our branded keywords? So they're almost, they'll give you permission to then pitch. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So yeah, that is going to be it for this video. Obviously, both of us will be there. Miles will be here. A bunch of our friends will be in Vegas this weekend. If you are there, reach out, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you got to do. Uh, but Corey, where can people find you? Yeah, so Twitter is my most active platform, at Ganim Corey on Twitter. And then I'm on YouTube as well, at Corey Ganim. So either of those two places are your best bet. My man, I appreciate you. Well, I'll see you in a couple of days. Yeah, see you soon, man. Looking forward to it.